and I really hope it works this time because if it doesn't, I might be lost. So my item number three is a PS4 that has the white light of death. Now I had $99 to spend on my item number three and this item cost $94.35. With the white light of death, we're looking at some sort of HDMI problem. And just looking at the HDMI port here, it looks like maybe someone has tried to replace it, but it's really hard to tell. I don't know for sure. So the first thing is we got to see if it's actually an HDMI issue, and then hopefully it'll be fixable. We really need to make some money on this one because I've not been doing well so far. My second item, the Sterling Motor, has still not sold on eBay, so I'm crossing my fingers. Hopefully it'll sell. I'm lowering the price slowly, but so far it's not going well, and it's getting down to where I'm probably not going to make much money on it, if at all. So hopefully I will, but we just have to wait and see. So let's get this one apart and see if it is indeed the HDMI port or somewhere on the HDMI system with the white light of death. It could be the port or it could be the HDMI IC chip. There's just really no way to know for sure, for sure, until we get it apart. Now in the listing, the seller did say and show that it actually did have a white light right here, but you never know. So this is not great news so far. We got something real sticky there. Looks like probably some sort of soda, can of Coke or Pepsi probably. Hopefully that's not the issue, but let's find out. Now before I get this power supply out, I'm actually gonna turn this thing on and see if it does indeed go to the white light. And here we go, let's see if it turns on first. Okay, good news, the fan does spin as well. Let's watch these lights, it should blink blue for a little while and then it should go white. Okay, great news so far, it does indeed go to the white light. It also does include the hard drive, sometimes you never know for sure if it has the hard drive, some sellers will sell it without. So, so far this actually looks really good other than the little bit of liquid on the power supply. It still obviously does work. So I think it was just a little bit of liquid that got over the power supply, but obviously it's not actually inside of it. So now we're gonna tear, down the, tear it down the rest of the way, see what the HDMI system looks like and see what it's gonna take to get it fixed. And out comes the motherboard, and let's look at the HDMI system. So I can tell already it has been, a repair has been attempted on it. This chip right here looks to for sure be a problem as it is actually on there crooked. So what I'm gonna do is first of all, I need to fix this chip and then I need to test all these filters up here, test the diodes and make sure that they're all not shorted and then we'll go from there. So here's a better view of the HDMI IC chip. You can see how it's a little bit crooked on here. You should be able to see these solder legs all along the edge about the same on each, uh, on each side here. The other thing we're gonna need to do is test each one of these and then also test these diodes right here. These black ones are diodes, so current should flow one way and not the other. And these are filters, which are basically just coils of wire inside there. So I'm gonna start by testing those just to make sure those are good. Good. Okay, so that one's good. That one's good. That one's good. And that one's good. So those are all good, let's check the diodes. Okay, no continuity, no continuity, and no continuity. Now I'm gonna flip my leads around and check them the other way. 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.6. Usually these are 0 0.6, 0 0.7 might be a little high, but we also have a problem with this chip, so I'm gonna fix that next. Now we've got a little bit of problem. We've got some extra solder here. Some of these legs look like they don't have enough solder on them. So we've got to make sure that's fixed. So I'm going to take my iron along here 
and get all of this, uh, all of these legs looking good, get this solder blob out of here, and then see how it looks when we're done. This chip may not have been prepped correctly. I might actually have to end up removing this chip and checking the pads under the chip. So now you can see exactly what I'm talking about. This pin here, this leg here, all of those legs, that leg, that leg, these legs, all of these are not connected because they weren't prepped properly. So we're gonna go through and take my soldering iron and we're gonna prep those pads and then we're gonna put this back on and see if it works. Okay, and now you can see, oh, I need to redo this pad. You can see all the other pads are nice and shiny with solder on them. I need to do, redo that pad and then we're ready to go. So with that chip fixed and placed back on there, do you think it's going to work? Put a comment in the comments section below and tell me if you think it's going to work. Well, let's give it a try. And we still have nothing on the screen. This one's getting more difficult. I'm going to get a new chip and put a new chip on there and then also retest some of the components around it just to double check it. So one of the ways I test these is with this HDMI tester. Now each of these pins will correspond to each of these 19 pins in the back. And each of these should have continuity. If any of these pins do not have continuity, which means there's no connection there, then that's a problem because they need to have connection from the back of this all the way through the HDMI port into the cable. This basically represents the cable. So if we go on pin two right here, and we go to the corresponding pin two right here, you can see that we have continuity. So if we go to pin one, you can see that we have continuity, but if we go with pin one and we kind of wiggle the cable around, you see, you can see that we lose continuity. So this means there may be a bad connection inside the port. The port definitely has a lot of flux in it. So it could be just a matter of flux, but I think I might just go ahead and replace this port anyways, and then we'll see if that fixes it. So first things first, we need to remove the old port. I'm just using hot air. You don't need any sort of chip quick. You don't need low melt solder. You don't need anything, just melt the port from the bottom. We're heating up these mounting pins. Unfortunately, you can't really see the best. I'll try and give you the best view I can. Heating up the mounting pins until the port basically just falls out the bottom. If you notice, the port just fell down. There we go. That port is out. Now I'm gonna put some more solder in the holes. Just make sure we got plenty in there. There we go. And there we go. With that port out, we can inspect these, these pins right here. And I'm gonna go through and put some fresh solder on the pins. Okay, and that looks beautiful. Each of those pins are lined up nicely. Now we're not done though. We need to re-solder each one of those pins onto the motherboard. So I retested everything that has to do with the HDMI system, the port, all the diodes, all the capacitors, all the other little components, and I found zero problems, no shorts, the diodes all worked fine. 
So I went ahead and replaced the HDMI chip yet again. So now we're gonna test it again and I really hope it works this time because if it doesn't, I'm not sure I'll be able to fix this one. Here we go. There we go. So cannot start the PS4. I'm just gonna need to probably rebuild the database and make sure the hard drive is fully working. And we also need to test the disk drive to make sure that's working. If that's all working, then we're gonna be ready to put it together. Let's test the disk drive and I'll make sure I can get this hard drive working as well. All right, and after a database rebuild, we do have it working. Also, you notice the system software is 4.74. That actually will add some value because those can be hacked. So 4.74 is great. I'm hoping that'll give us some extra value on this so we can make a little bit more profit. I'm confident we'll actually be able to make some profit on this one and that might be enough to help us win this challenge as most of our items have not been bringing much, if any, profit. Now let's test the disk drive and see if that works. And there we go, the disk drive does indeed work. Unfortunately, there's not enough free space right now, but it does show that the disk drive actually is working. Now all I have left to do is get this back together, get it listed on eBay, and hopefully sold for a nice profit. Be sure to check out the next video in this series. I'll leave a link on your screen now so you can click on that and come hang out with me over there. Also, be sure to check out the other YouTubers in this challenge. I'll leave links in the description for their videos, so check them out as well and see how they're doing and see if you think I can win.